Hello and welcome to a video about fair use. As a teacher, you no doubt use internet resources heavily in your teaching, and in doing so, you undoubtedly try to follow copyright and fair use rules. We definitely expect it from our students, but it applies to faculty just as much. While we won't have time to cover all of the nuances of fair use in such a brief video, let's hit the main points and apply them to some helpful examples. First, what is fair use? Well, in a nutshell, it's a flexible exception to copyright that's meant to balance the rights of creators with those using their copyrighted works for education, criticism, or to make new creative content. Clear on that? Probably not. The words flexible exception are pretty ambiguous. So to help clarify and define that gray area, there are four factors that determine fair use. So right now I'm looking at TCC Library's copyright guide, specifically the page about fair use. And you can see the four fair use factors here. The purpose and character of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the portion used, and the effect of the use upon the market. Knowing about these factors, though, doesn't necessarily clear up the confusion. So let's try to bring things into focus and provide some practical examples. My first recommendation is to use a checklist to help you determine fair use. There are many checklists out there, but I'll recommend one right now. This one that we're looking at is from Columbia University Libraries and walks you through the four factors of fair use as they apply to the source of information you're considering. It doesn't take long to complete, probably just a few minutes. Once you're finished, keep it for your records. Now, let's apply this checklist to some examples. Example 1. Let's say I found a PDF full text journal article on the internet. I'd like to upload it to Canvas, but first I want to double check that it's fair use. Often the assumption is made that if the purpose of using a source is for teaching and it's posted in a protected environment like Canvas, it's fair use. But there are other factors to consider, especially the amount of the work used. Let's consult our checklist. I've already filled it out, but let me highlight a few of my answers that help me determine whether this is fair use or not. You can see that I've worked my way through the purpose section and the nature section. Let's pause here and look at the amount section. In my example of the full text journal article found on the internet, I'm using the entire work which includes the pieces that are central to or the heart of the work. Hypothetically, you can check as many of the boxes over here in the favoring fair use column as you like on this checklist, but if either or both of the boxes in the amount section are checked, most likely your use is not fair use. Now if I was to use a smaller portion of the work that wasn't the heart of the work, then that would most likely tip the balance here and it would become fair use. Again, the amount of work used is a heavy determining factor. Well then, what's the solution to my need since the article in question was not considered fair use? Check the library databases. It's quite possible that the library's databases have the article that you need and you could then provide the permalink in Canvas to that article. The article will also be accessible if it's from a library database, something that isn't true of the article PDF that I found online. If it's not available through the databases, talk with a librarian. We can guide you in getting permission to use the article in question or find alternatives. Example 2. I'd like to link to a YouTube video from Canvas. This one is easy. We don't need a checklist to figure this out. You can legally link to anything online without worries of violating copyright. It's perfectly legal. While that's true, you still run into two problems with videos on YouTube. First, sometimes those videos have been uploaded illegally and the links are unstable, meaning that they could be taken down without notice because of a copyright violation. So there's not only an ethical concern in using illegally uploaded videos, they could also disappear on you in the middle of the term. Second, 
While YouTube videos do have the capacity for captioning, not all use this option. And if they do, the captions are often done poorly. This means the videos may not be accessible. So while linking to YouTube videos is legal, make sure the video has been uploaded from a legitimate source and consider the captioning issue as well. Determining fair use is not always easy, but with practice, it definitely gets easier. Try to remember, it's not just about copyright and fair use. Accessibility plays a big role too. Try using library resources first, like the article databases and streaming video collections. You'll be surprised at the great resources available. Plus, those resources are accessible. And if you get stuck, you can always ask a librarian for help. Please do. That's why we're here.